friends today i will discuss on the citizenship amendment bill 2016 which was introduced in lok sabha by our home minister sri rajnath singh ji and its consequences if it becomes an act and whether the bill is in consonance with a very founding philosophy with regard to secular of our indian constitution or not why do i need to discuss this bill the bill to amend the citizenship act 1955 this bill whether it becomes an act or not that is for the parliament to decide but what happens if it becomes an act if it becomes an act then it is going to destroy it is going to invalidate assam accord which was signed in 1985 during the regime of the then prime minister sri rajiv gandhi if it becomes an act that it will give confusion it will bring a lot of confusion with regard to honorable supreme court's directive on setting up national register of citizens nrc for assam if it becomes an act and obviously it is going to mean that the state meaning the union of india the state favors some foreigners belonging to some foreign countries and belonging to a few religions and they happen to be the foreigners who do not belong to a particular set of religions and in this in this juncture the secular fabric of our indian constitution the secular fabric of our very country india is going to get digress and this has to be taken seriously if this bill becomes an act what will happen to the entire notice in you will find that the already struggling indigenous population of the north of india will be reduced to a mere minority and what will happen to the demography and the political geography of the entire north of india so before this bill becomes an act we need to have a series of debates and that to a very serious debate and this bill which is very serious indeed and precisely because of the seriousness the joint parliamentary committee was set up the joint parliamentary committee was set up as it was with comprising with comprises 16 members so it is 16 member jpc set up by a bjp mp member of parliament sri uh, satyapal singh and it is taking a round of some regions of the north of india like in assam it is uh, i believe it is going to meghalaya but in case of meghalaya the meghalaya cabinet has already opposed this bill there is a cabinet decision on that in case of arunachal pradesh the arunachal pradesh administration in one of the districts in uh in the district of uh, uh lower siam district in arunachal pradesh the district administration has already uh sent out an order dated 9th of may 2019 saying that the bangladeshi and the rohingya muslims are planning to sneak into arunachal pradesh in the form of labor or carpenter or mason and therefore they need to be uh, they need to be detected and these are uh, after being identified as guarded of nrc and the district administrative uh, the in the form of deputy commissioner arunachal pradesh lower siam district This, the deputy commissioner clearly orders that these foreign nationals are not to be engaged in any construction work so we have this administrative seriousness either you see in the former meghalaya cabinet saying no to this bill or arunachal pradesh administration taking serious note on the foreigners be it bangladeshi or be it rohingya irrespective of the religions now what happens when this bill becomes an act this bill in this bill 
if this in the in this range if you read the statement of objects and visions you will find what is the bill spoke about the bill which was introduced on july 19 2016 in lok sabha the bill intends it tries to amend the citizenship act 1955 so if through this bill the government of the day is trying the level best to bring to bring minority communities with the hindu sikhs buddhist jains parsi and christians from afghanistan bangladesh and pakistan and the government of the day is going to make them become an indian now the government of the day is not going to make some foreigners from these very countries such as afghanistan bangladesh and pakistan but who belong to different other religion and that religion is not mentioned here the government of the day is not interested in bringing them here in india so some particular religions are deliberately sidelined by this government and some religions are also taken into consideration by this government and therefore the state treats not all the religions equally and therefore there is no neutrality in fact there is no neutrality and partiality of the state towards different religions and our constitution which discusses our uh, and also in its preamble the concept of philosophy of secular which we find in our constitution right from its founding in the form of our original framers in the form of article 25 26 and 27 in an implicit way and it became explicit when it when the word secular was inserted in the 42nd amendment so what happened here is this bill the very nature of the bill is also going against the secular fabric of our constitution the secular fabric of our country if we go through article 11 and article 14 though article 11 clearly says that parliament has a right to legislate on citizens but we have article 14 which talks about equality before law so in this equality it talks about equality of before law to any person it does not mention any citizens so any person could be a person could include citizens person who could include foreigners but what happened in article 11 the article 11 which gives power to the parliament to regulate the right of citizenship by law do the parliament can do that but also we have to see what is there in article 14 which talks about equality before the law that the state shall not deny to any person equality before the law or the equal protection of the laws within the territory of india now again article 11 talks about parliament to regulate the right of citizenship by law nothing in the foregoing provisions of this part shall derogate from the power of parliament to make any provision with respect to the acquisition and termination of citizenship and all other matters relating to citizenship well parliament does have a right does have a power yes but parliament also ought to respect the constitution the article 14 of the constitution and indeed the preamble of the constitution and in our preamble the philosophy of secular is indeed a very significant ingredient of our constitutions so what happens our in our constituent assembly debate dr b r ambedkar stated i quote i do not think that any other article has given the drafting committee such a headache as this particular article this particular article meaning article 11 so article 11 was considered to be a very very complex article but today the government of the day is almost going to make it easy why do i say easy because they are going to amend this bill and in the process the government of the day is going to make assam accord invalid 
is going to confuse NRC, which is happening right now under the directive uh, under the direction of Honorable Supreme Court with regard to Assam. With this bill, the government of the day is trying to reduce the entire indigenous indigenous people of the north of India into a minority. With this bill, the government of the day is going to ensure that the destruction of the secular fabric, the destruction of the secular nature of our Indian constitution begins. So, before even this bill uh, came into being, was introduced in the parliament, there was there were notification issued in 2015 and 16 by the government of India. And it excluded religious minorities of Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh from being deported as illegal migrants are under the Passports Act 1920 and the Foreigners Act 1946. So after this notification in 2015 and 2016, the, the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016 was introduced in the Lok Sabha. Of course, it is a JPC, it is, it is a Joint Parliamentary Committee headed by Satyapal Singh or BJP MP and the JPC is a 16 members uh, committee. The JPC, uh, the formation of JPC is very rare in a parliamentary history. We have had such 10 JPCs in the past and to my understanding this must be 11 JPC. The JPC is supposed to go to the regions which are likely to be affected by these deals if it becomes an act. So they have gone to Assam and they are going to Meghalaya. But we know that Meghalaya government has already, the Meghalaya cabinet has already opposed the bill in Toto and there is a strong apprehension in almost an entire region of the northeast and therefore this, this, this bill has to be taken very seriously. And if these bills become an act, what happens in Assam Accord, if you see Assam Accord, which is also called Memorandum of Settlement, which was signed during the uh, Prime Minister of uh, the then Prime Minister Sri Rajiv Gandhi. In this memorandum of, under, uh, of settlement in Assam Court, 15 August 1985, you will find under foreigners issue number 5, under this 5, in 8, number 8, you will find foreigners who came to Assam on or after March 25, 1971 shall continue to be detected, deleted and expelled in accordance with law. Immediate and practical steps shall be taken to expel such foreigners. So this particular point, which is there in number 8 of 5, this comes in a heading, foreigners issue, it's going to become irrelevant, it's going to be invalid if this bill becomes an act. Because this bill talks about foreigners with a particular religious background. And in Assam Accord, it talks about foreigners. It doesn't talk about a particular religion or some religion. So now, foreigners, I mean these foreigners, according to this bill, if it becomes A, when they come to India, of course, they when they come to India, I mean they are going to come to Assam also, because their entry to Assam may not or cannot be denied. So if they come to Assam on or after March 25, 1971, I mean, they are going to come, maybe if, it, if this become an act uh, in 2018, so if they are going to come to Assam in 2018, this very idea that they should be detected, deleted and expelled in accordance with law will become invalid and irrelevant. So, Assam Accord is going to be brushed aside, is going to become a pass. Once this bill becomes an act, and this very consequence of invalidating or making Assam Accord totally irrelevant and also bringing confusion in NRC of Assam, which is happening right now under the direction of Honorable Supreme Court. And not only that, a very pragmatic consequence of reducing the indigenous population of the North East India into minority, these issues are to be taken very seriously. And if some people say that these are regional issues, these are, but these, these are related to the North East India, well, this is not only related to North East India. The very, very basic feature of our Indian constitution, secular, is at stake now. 
who is going to safeguard secular in our country? Where is the soul of secular in our Indian constitutions? Now, what happens? In our preamble, it says that the question of secularism is not one of sentiment but one of law. It is not something new that was introduced by one prime minister in 1976 in the, constitu uh, in the Constitution, 42nd Amendment, 8th, 1976. No. This, the very idea of secular democracy, the very idea of secular philosophy was already there in the original framers of our Indian Constitution in the form of Article 25, 26, and 27. Now, if anyone reads 20, Article 25, 26, or 27, we can draw that there shall be no state religion in India. The state will neither establish a religion of its own nor confer any special, special patronage upon any particular religion. Again, but what do we find in this bill, in the, in, in, in the Citizenship uh, uh, Amendment Bill 2016? It appears to be that some special patronage has been given to some particular religions and by neglecting some other particular religions, that too by the state. And that is why the government of the day has introduced this bill in Lok Sabha. Again, if we see in other way, the state appears to me that the state has failed to, to maintain neutrality and impartiality towards all religions. Again, if you have to go to the nine judges judgment of Honorable Supreme Court, Bomai versus Union of India, 1994. Again, in the judgment also, it reads that secularism in India does not mean that the state should be hostile to religion, but that it should be neutral as between the different religions. The neutrality of the state, and which is very important, the neutrality of the state will be violated if religion is used for political purposes and advocated by the political parties for their political ends. An appeal to the electorate on grounds of religion offends secular democracy. Politics and religion cannot be mixed. So what do we find here? The then BJP Prime Minister candidate Sri Narendra Modi in 2014 went to West Bengal and started commenting that if, uh, if the, his party came into power then they will take back all the, they will ensure that all the Bangladeshis were taken back to Bangladesh the illegal Bangladeshis, but what is happening right now? Again, when he went to Selchar in Assam for election campaign in 2014, what happened there? There, again, he also discusses about the accommodating Hindu Bangladeshis in India. This happened, and there is a news report dated 22nd February 2014, in which Narendra Modi is the then BJP Prime Minister and candidate stated, I quote, we will have to accommodate Hindu Bangladeshi migrants here, here in India, unquote. So the question is, where are you going to accommodate these foreigners or these Bangladeshis? Are you going to accommodate them in the northeastern India? Or where are, are you going to accommodate them? Now, if you say you are not going to accommodate them in Assam or in other parts of the northeast India, then why are you not writing it in your amendment bills, in your in your citizenship amendment bill 2016? There is no clause in that regard. So, since there is no mentioning, and therefore we are very, very much worried about where these people from outside our country, when they come to India, if this bill becomes an egg, where are they going to get accommodated? Now, the entire people of the Northeast India, they are very much concerned, particularly the entire indigenous people of our Northeast India are very much concerned by these bills. And the very nature of our secularism in India is at stake because this bill, this bill favors some foreigners with some religious background and this bill denies some foreigners because they belong to a particular religion or some religion background and this bill has no place for those who do not believe in any religion or those who are atheists. So if we have to see in the holistic picture this the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016 
it is going to destroy and in fact the very the very philosophy the the very argument which uh, is there in this amendment is indeed a way to destroy the secular fabric of india is way to destroy the secular character of our constitution of india indeed destroying the preamble to our constitution it is going to bring a confusion to the ongoing nrc national register of citizens by under the honorable supreme court for assam it is going to reduce the entire indigenous population of north east india into a minority and what is going to happen in our country is the country is going to be in a big mess so i it's not it's not that i come from the north east india therefore it is more it is a more serious concern to me but even more than that the nature and the very essence of this bill is already destroying the essence of our preamble to constitution of india that is the very idea the very philosophy of being secular in our country and therefore this bill should be opposed and i wish and i appeal and i urge our country fellow men and fellow women women that we must support this bill and let this government of the day remember remember the philosophy of secularism remember that the north east indians indigenous population remember assam accord this shall never be put into a mere waste and they shall not be brushed aside or put under a carpet and with this note i must say that this bill is not in good taste of a democracy not in good taste in terms of our secular character of our country and it in no way going to help safeguard or honor the people of north east india thank you